there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Tonight, join me, Jack Wilson, for a special edition of Crime Scene. We're going to journey back to August 9th and 10th, 1969. We're waiting for our father to be set free. Two nights of murder that sent terror through Los Angeles and ultimately the world. Next week on Crime Scene, we're going to bring you face to face with the evil few that forever poisoned the love generation. As I talk with the members of Charlie's family. Hear the jailhouse confessions of Leslie, the homecoming queen twisted by Charlie into a knife-wielding maniac. Bobby, the unknown linchpin of the family who committed the first murder. Sadie, now a born-again Christian, once Charlie's most outrageous disciple. Patty, a former Sunday school teacher. She found Jesus Christ in Charlie. And Tex, the former high school football captain who became Charlie's bloodiest butcher. 
In Charlie, they found a daddy, a lover, and a savior. And it only took his words to ignite within them the rampage of hate and murder. The actual killers bringing into focus for the first time their years as members of Charlie's family. You can tell in his voice he cares. Oh, he did so many drugs that it made sense, and we were sure that it would work. She, Lady Jack. She's up for parole, you know, the end of the year. My parole hearings are taped and broadcast. There's no return address on this one. Hmm. the hell is that? Hey, look at this. To the pig producer of the Charlie movie. How much more am I supposed to suffer for something that I did when I was 20 years old? Look up the half-inch machine and play. I want to see what the hell it is. You got it. Charlie. You know, maybe whoever sent it thinks she'll use it. There's no way in hell I'm going to use that thing. Every time they even make a mention of the murders, the family murders, it is Charlie, 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 the, the prince of evil, right? Very seldom have I ever seen them mention the kids that put the knives and the bullets in the victims. That's what gets me. Bobby and Gypsy and I are sort of this traveling family of our own. I already had that shit down when I met him. I had my girls, he had his. This is really getting Relax. heavy, Bobby. I'm, I'm getting really yes. dry eyes. They're, they're eating my skin. Help me. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. influenced it was him by me and so I met Charlie making music is how I met Charlie when I joined a band called the Milky Way Charlie was in it he was a fine musician very intense very vivid from being locked up all that time and he was a great lyricist I was like a lot of kids my age looking for God on a quest for God stumbling around, taking drugs, kind of like a blind girl in the forest. <laughs> Me and Dad. <laughs> Linda, I want you to come to the ranch with me this time. Just for a few days, Charlie acts from his soul. Charlie is the man that we've all been waiting for. I was living in this apartment with my dog and my life was really routine. I just go to work, go home, go shopping, go to work, go home, go shopping. And it was really a drag. And then Charlie blows in and he just changed everything. And I dropped it all and I just took off. He brought out all these things in me that I was just sticking in slots. When Charlie got out, he was 33. He had been locked up since he was 13. He was lonely. And this was the first time he had a group of women who cared about him, who loved him. And Charlie loved those girls. He treated them with plenty of respect. Well, I was trying to get close to Charlie's girls. It's astounding that Charlie even knew Dennis and that we were all living in this uh, rock star's mansion in the first place. But then Dennis wised up and uh, kicked us all out. There's a lot of acid at the ranch. And of course, I went where the girls went. I followed them out to the ranch and tried to integrate myself with Charlie. I came to you with all the love in my heart, and you slaughtered me, man. You slaughtered me. And now I gotta hide. I gotta hide my soul so you won't kill me. That's why the kids have to hide. They come out and their parents say, shut up, get back inside yourself. You don't need to be so brown. We gotta judge ourselves. 
They hate to look at themselves. <laughs> they hate to look at the truth in themselves, man. They persecute themselves. <laughs> Charlie, this is Tex. You can have anything I got. Charlie wasn't the leader at all. He followed us around and took care of us. <laughs> Are you ready to die? Yes, I am. <laughs> and live forever. Being accepted by the family, Charlie, was like an answer, an answer to an unspoken prayer. It's not where you're not free. Before his Helter Skelter trip, everything was beautiful. All we did was smoke grass and drop acid and make love as much as possible. We were forced to examine our souls, not privately or secretly, but before Charlie and the entire family. I mean, really, everything that everything was for was for fucking. <laughs> That's what everything was for, man to unify ourselves with LSD. I mean, if we weren't fucking, we were leading up to it. It was heavy. And if we weren't leading up to it, we were fucking. experience with group sex, but I, I warmed up to it. The girls kept telling me that it was my parents' hang-ups, that I had to deprogram myself from their inhibitions. <laughs> That's what Charlie said the whole universe was about, man. It was all one big fuck. Everything was in and out, smoking and eating and drinking. It was all just one big fuck. We're not hippies. We're slippies. <laughs> was fairly isolated. You had to take a back road from the Santa Susana Pass to get there. And it was owned by this 80-year-old uh, blind guy named George. Well, Charlie never really believed that George was completely blind. He would have one of the girls stripped down in front of him from time to time just to see if there was some sort of reaction. Charlie was always trying to cultivate George with the girls, you know, to help cook and clean and, and make love to him. And of course, we helped out along, around the ranch. Uh, whatever, shoveling manure, grooming the horses, whatever it took to keep a good front and make us look good with George. And for the most part, we got along with the other ranch hands. <laughs> Except for Shorty. Excuse me. Charlie tried, but Shorty was just that one ranch hand that he couldn't work his magic on. Charlie wasn't looking for attention, which is why he got so much of it. <laughs> you people 
people sure have strange concepts of boyfriend girlfriend. Boyfriend girlfriend. Boyfriend girlfriend. Boyfriend girlfriend. <laughs> I didn't know what to make of Bobby when I met him. He seemed like a spoiled, super hippie, you know, arrogant, always trying to use a power that he didn't really have to influence the rest of the group. What's the problem? Last night, you said we were going swimming this morning. I didn't know you were going to be in the barn fucking Bobby. Look, I don't belong to you, Tex. You got that? I don't belong to anybody. I can do anything I want, and so can you. Why in the hell did you bring me here in the first I place? I brought you here to meet everyone. <laughs> I brought you here to meet Charlie. Charlie, 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 Charlie. Sometimes our group lovemaking could be pretty comical. Other times it was devastating. But that's how we were growing. We were forming a bond as a family. And Charlie was directing all these energies. But no one could direct them. Charlie wasn't our leader. He didn't want us hanging on him like our parents wanted us to hang on to them. We didn't need him. Charlie let us be beautiful. And I'm willing to die for Charlie because he's me. Well, we believed that we were cleansing ourselves spiritually. The goal was to achieve an inner harmony as a group, as an example to the rest of the world, which we saw as phony and desperate. We talk this way about Charlie, and people say, people like you say that we're brainwashed. But we've seen Charlie do things that no human being has done before. We saw him pick up a bird in the desert and breathe on it and bring it back to life. And he said, see, I told you you were perfect. You must always think of yourself as perfection. And I bought it and him and the whole brainwash. Man, I've been trying to get a buzz off of everybody. Nobody has nothing. Clem, I need to get high. Pack me a bowl, please. Uh, that was the last one. Oh, you got to be kidding. This any more. God damn it! God damn it! God damn it, Charlie, that sucks! Mm, yeah. I know some knuckleheads we can burn for at least a lid. Come on, let's go. Oh, whoa, now! Whoa, 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 whoa there! Whoa, Charlie, let go of my hey, legs! Hey, hey. Let go of my legs! Ow! Let whoa, whoa, go. whoa, 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 Some dirty feet here, Sadie. There was a <laughs> love there, a very strong, very true love there, and if I hadn't felt it, I wouldn't have followed Charlie. <laughs> a joint! You've got a... You've got pot. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Did you like this? But until I see all of you knowing who you are, I'm going to be very much what I am. God Almighty God! Who do you think sent that tape? I mean, it was a practical joke by some kids. You know, Charlie's been sort of an underground hero for a lot of these kids. Wait a minute, I want to show you something. I meant to show you this the other day. I picked it up at the Dark Fantasy comic book store, but look at this. Row after row of Charlie faces. Look at that. And then I realized that it's all been leading to right now. You know, it's like the family. This is the last time. Because now I've got the perfect body, the one I've wanted all along, the strongest one. The one that's going to make it through for the last time. Charlie told us that children were the real leaders of the family. They were the ones who led the way. Since we waited on them, they set the pace. 
Jesus Christ and his children were just kids. They were living free without guilt and without shame. They were able to take off their clothes and lie in the sun and be one together. We took hundreds of acid trips together, smoked a lot of pot together, because we wanted to be like Charlie, because to us, he was living perfection. We wanted to mirror him. We had so much sex. We had every kind of sex you can imagine. We did things you'd never even think of. It's a miracle I'm not dead from diseases by now. I had no standards. I would sleep with anybody, anybody I wanted to or anybody Charlie wanted me to. He would always give me to the meanest biker or the craziest whoever because he said I could outfreak anyone with sex. All right, go ahead, you know, when the, the trial started for the family, it was really the, the milestone in the death of the hippie movement, I would really think. Sort of like Patty Hearst. And... Martin Luther King died with love. Kennedy died talking about something you couldn't even understand. Some kind of generalized love. You never even backed it up. Stop down. Bullshit. Love is the only weapon with which I got to fight. I got a hell of a lot of weapons to fight. I got my sword. I got compasses. I got guns. I got dynamite. I got a hell of a lot to fight. I'll fight. Going to quiet red. I just want you to stop this now. If you have any respect at all, are we black, proud, and socialist? Hey, you know, that reminds me about something. Remember the comic book store where I got the poster? Yeah. Okay. They had both of Charlie's albums there, both of them, in either vinyl or CDs. Well, finally made the record bins. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, but did you buy them? So, Jerry, what was it like to talk to Charlie? You could take him in very small doses. I mean, he'd throw 10 things at you, you'd be on three, he'd be on seven and get real physical about it. He, he, he'd bend over, he'd pick up a, a handful of rocks, he'd toss them in the air and say, see, you could throw it all away and it'll come back to you. We're flashing with divine harmony this morning. I just wrote two songs while the sun was rising. Very, very creepy. Charlie was not willing to sell out to the record producers, which is the first and most important requirement before the industry is willing to handle an artist. Now, if you want professional sound, you know maybe something you can use, use I you suggest you get in the Hey, 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 what's the problem here, huh? Many musicians say they don't care about the money, yet they commit themselves to be at given places at certain times and to produce what sells, whether they believe in it or not. Charlie didn't want that success. Charlie wanted success on his own terms. He didn't want to be imprisoned. I know what's best for us, man. I know. Do you know anything about uh, the acoustics in this studio? Do you know anything about EQ? Do you know anything about mixing? I know about the energy rays of a free love society, and I know that your cold, heartless technology hasn't defined that yet. Amen, Charlie. But it's there. It's here. It's here, dig. Like a thought. It's a thought. It's in a thought. It's in a thought. From me to you. <laughs> I don't have to take this shit. Jerry, 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 Jerry come on, man. Charlie, what are you doing? You don't go slapping people. Well, Charlie, fuck you on, in your really, bullshit man. studio. Hey, is that is that what you think, man? Charlie does things his way. He don't conform to the pig rules of the establishment. So, Terry, you worked in the studio with Charlie. Now, you was producer. What, what did you think of him as a musician, as an artist? Charlie was at the edge. Just the, the whole 60s scene of uh, L.A., things kind of fell to a critical mass. And at, at one point, I actually thought, well, maybe there is something we could do with this. But um... the music was really crap, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the music was crap. What's so, what's so formal over here on the BBC? Just come and say you love me. Give up your work. Come on, you can be. I mean, things look good for Charlie. And everybody was just goofing with their head in the clouds. Well, we gave up our birthdays and renounced our families. Charlie didn't allow any clocks, calendars, or anything like that on the ranch. Uh, Dennis and Bobby were donating food, cars, women, whatever. It was always submit, give something to Charlie, submit everything you had, uh, submit your ego. If you do not give me the deep 
just drop bass and share out of this big pile of clothes and costumes. We'll play the day away, changing situations and characters. <laughs> well, you're all going to be clearing out of here pretty soon, because George is getting real tired of you giving his ranch bad name. Understand all you little creeps. Charlie's not Jesus Christ. He's not the devil. He's just a little con man. He's been having his life in jail. God well, damn once it. the uh, bikers and ex-cons moved on to the ranch, it became a chop shop for stolen cars and dune buggies, and Shorty began taking down license plate numbers. Now, Shorty was married to this black go-go dancer, and that just burned Charlie up because it went totally against his racial philosophies. Hey, you nigga lover! I heard your wife takes it up the ass. Is that true? <laughs> well, loose lips sink shit. <laughs> he never said in so many words that he was Christ. But he would imply. Like when he'd look at me and smile and he'd say, Don't you know who I am? I made love to Charlie last night. Yeah? How was it? Well, it was... <laughs> Come on. Like, what was it like? It was, it was great. <laughs> it was kind of scary. He said all these really nice things to me. Then when he started to come, he got real tense. And then he climaxed, and I came, but... <sighs> I got all... tense. It was like I couldn't move my arms for about a minute. At all. I was paralyzed. That was real scary. That's because your ego is dying. Until you can give yourself completely and your ego's dead, you can't be at the now. See what I'm saying? But it happens, you know? No, no sorrow that it's over. I'm glad it's over. Hurry, hurry, my children, hurry. Take it down, we got time. We are now at the end of the season. was trying to please Charlie. What are you doing? Charlie loved it when they brought young girls into the family. Young love is what he called it. Go give me some young love. Okay, I'll take I you got... home. I'll take you home. Don't worry about it. I'll get the keys to the bread truck from Charlie. Okay, enough. Go get the keys from Charlie. Only if you promise to come to a party with me. What party? We throw parties here all the time. 
Everybody wants to meet you. Just come to this one. Okay? Okay. Okay? Terry was supposed to come in and record us in our natural environment. Charlie thought a record deal was coming, too. When I showed up, the ranch was in full swing. Yeah, we had high expectations. Charlie had us clean the place from top to bottom. We had uh, zuzus, hundreds of joints were rolled. And the girls, well, they prepared this outstanding vegetarian feast. The food that those stores threw away was perfectly good. And we only took the very best of what was there. Oh, garbage dump. Oh, garbage dump. Why are you called a garbage dump? The first day I came to the ranch, Charlie sent me on a garbage run. He said, take some clean clothes, because you'll get all dirty. And so I went down to the market, and I hopped in the can. And we went through everything and got all dirty. And we just took the best of everything. And we took it and cleaned it and took the skins off and cut all the spots out. Nobody goes hungry here. You could feed the world with my garbage dump. You could feed the world with my garbage dump. Charlie, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I was, uh, I was, I was, I was tied up in a meeting, OK? Hey, hey, whoa, Charlie. Charlie, ease up, man. I never promised you I'd be there. I said I'd come if I could, OK? It's like I tried to explain to you before, okay? The record execs don't think your stuff is marketable right now. What I suggest that we do is we'll sit on it till spring, and uh, and who knows? You by then you could be the biggest name since um, since Jim Morrison. Whoa, 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 whoa! What do you mean, make up my mind? This one little space and time where Charlie was there. But he wasn't there. Little freak. Charlie felt betrayed. His album was going to make us rich, and it was going to spread his message to the world. I mean, it didn't slow us down. We had all the makings for a great party. When Simmy came with the family, she was a virgin, and she was scared. She was scared stiff. Charlie's about the hippest guy I ever met. It's gonna open doors and this little brain yours. So will this. What's that? This is LSD. <laughs> Here, take two. We've already dropped. The whole thing. I've never done any night. hard drugs before. That's not a hard drug. Come on, this uh, is just Oh, we water. don't do any hard drugs. It's just, it's just acid. It's not like it's heroin or cocaine or anything. It's a clue. I don't know how. What do you mean you don't know how? It's just like going in the doctor's office, stick out your tongue, say ah. Oh. Say ah. Wow, I, I've always wondered what it's like, you know, to trip. It's a groove. Say ah, ah. Right. Say ah. Ah. On her first big experience with the family, we all tripped on acid. And she plumb tripped out on that. She flipped completely out. We were all tripping right along, and we bawled our brains out. It wasn't rape. She loved it. It's, it's like, uh, she would start fighting, and she's fighting and scared and fighting. And then she'd calm down and go, ah. Oh. And then she'd realize what, what was happening to her, and she'd get all scared and frightened. And, and Charlie was sitting in the corner, just directing the operation.
sign of the semi sherry what 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 I know she was right. But that was Bobby and Charlie. I had nothing to do with that. No, she just vanished. Never heard from her again. I pray for her now in my nightly prayers. I just thank God she got out when she did, or else she might have ended up in prison, too. You've got the nerve to pray for me. I'm just as, you're just as disgusting as I am. It's your fault. I've always hated you. You ruined me. I ruined my whole life. All my life. Really, we really, we struggle. I mean, we struggle with ourselves, you know. Charlie, I am not going to give up all my possessions to come live with you, man. Suddenly there was a lot more talk about fear and its usefulness. You know, be like an animal, be like a coyote. Use fear to help you exist and to live in the now. Well, I, I think I tried to make myself believe I was a witch. I was Yana, the good witch. Charlie just shifted gears. We ignored the establishment, and we ignored reality even more than before. We just continued on with the Magical Mystery Tour. Charlie got that from the Beatles. He called life, or, or the flow of life, the Magical Mystery Tour. We were all part of it, one mind, one soul, one body within it and with it. It's a total state of paranoia. It's, it's man, when you're that aware, you you can feel everything. You can see everything that moves. You can hear everything that makes a sound. You can smell every smell. And when you're that aware, you're at the now. This is when we started going out on creepy crawl missions. Well, not breaking and entering, creepy crawling. You what? We creepy crawled them. A few of us would drive into some wealthy neighborhood and we'd pick a house and we'd steal right from under these people's noses while they slept. You had to be super aware. You had to be aware of every move you made. Well, sometimes we'd drop acid to heighten our awareness level. We creepy crawled probably 50 houses or more and we never got caught, not once. You stay positive, you confront your fears. You say yes to your fears, submit to them and overcome them. No sense makes sense. You can't get caught if you don't got thought in your head. Sometimes we would steal from the people's houses that we broke into. Other times we'd just move the furniture around to freak them out when they woke up in the morning. I was a master criminal. I can't believe you ever been alive. You killed me first. Charlie developed this game. We'd take really strong LSD and sit in a circle around an empty chair. Charlie called it the fear chair. We'd stare at this chair while Charlie spoke. He told us to imagine a rich establishment pig sitting in the chair. Now it's the pig's trial, he'd say, and we'd stare at this imaginary person and project his fear right back at him, keeping him immobilized with his own projected fear. Keep judging yourselves and Charlie. Don't look in the mirror. I don't remember exactly when my mind crossed over from reality to imagination, but there was no escaping it. Things seemed so doom laden that summer. Everything that Charlie preached seemed like absolute divine driven truth, and Charlie wasn't preaching about death of the ego anymore. No, he meant violent death, physical death. And when he said death is beautiful, he meant it. Death is beautiful because it's what people fear the most. And death was merely an illusion anyway because the infinite soul can never die. If you're not dead, you will be soon. <laughs> <laughs> Tell
Tex was in bad shape. Charlie had told us all we had to cease to exist, but Tex never could. Free the mind, and your ass is bound to follow. It's like he wanted it both ways, you know? One minute he'd be bad-mouthing Charlie, and the next minute he'd be saying shit like, I am Charlie, and Charlie is me. You dig, man? <laughs> Yep. Here we are. Give me the money. You bring it out, I'll pay the dude. No, man, no fronts. The man doesn't front to anybody. He'd be running at 50 yards from the house and taking the money right back. That's not a fucking hey, front. You know, he's not going to change his rules for me. Now, do you want this or not? Because I don't care. We can go right now. I want lots of papa. Give me the money. I'll be back in a flash. I don't like this. Lights pop and called the ranch, matter in hell. And Charlie took the call. Who is it? It's Charlie, man. And Charlie talked to him, soothed him out, cooled him, and said, don't come down here. I'll come over there, and we'll settle this thing. Where you going? Hey, baby, what's your name? I'm not going to leave. Poor child. You must be Rosie. Hey, Sam, I'm talking to you. Get over here. Marnie, would you untie this poor girl's hands? Where are you going? Look, motherfucker, you keep on tying up. Oh, come on, man. This little woman could not muscle you. All right, motherfucker, get up. Get up. Put that fucking gun on the table. Easy. I said easy. Oh, the race war was something we believed in totally. It wasn't the reason for the murders, but the belief that there was going to be a great race wars was something that hung in the atmosphere and drove us crazy. Charlie thought Lots of Papa was a Black Panther. Uh, nothing has changed since we talked on the phone, man. And if Tex ain't got every last cent of that money, he's wasted. I'm gonna kill him. He's gonna be wiped out. You dig it? It's not necessary. Would you take it as a gift from me? <laughs> Jeff, please. Okay. And here you are. Kill me. My life in exchange for my brother. Shoot me. Amen, Charlie. He's whatever a person wants to make of him. He's a mirror, actually. A reflection of yourself. Get up! They'll both be right here when you get back. If we don't fuck them to death. Get text for you. <laughs> Morning. I'll be back soon. Now you're making sense, little man. What are you hey, going to do? It. Shoot me? <laughs> <laughs> How can I shoot you with an empty gun? <laughs> I have bullets in it, man. everything that's ever been written, people always overlook how important that shooting was and the impact that it had on the future. Charlie was terrified that the Black Panthers would come down on us for shooting lots of Papa. It's a really nice shirt you're wearing there. I like it. I really do. Could I have it? I sure would like to have it. I remember hearing about the cop who shot the 16-year-old black kid. They had the race riots in Watts. 
the Black Panthers in San Francisco. Martin Luther King had just been assassinated. So Charlie's rap didn't seem too far out at all. It didn't seem like it was going to happen a month from now. It was happening right now. Right now. I love you. I do. And I think that's really the crux of the entire story here, that that was the springboard for these killings. That was the first domino to tip over, and it, it led to the rest. It's gone, man. Here, I can see more in there. two fucking guys geeking. I ain't geeking on nothing, man. I guess not. This shit fucking sucks. I can hardly geek off of it myself. Now, I like crack. Some more. Yeah. It feels good and everything, but I don't need it or anything. Yeah. You guys take too Just big a hit. Jesus Christ, you fucking whine so much, man. Why don't you take your turn? Thank you, finally. Yeah. I thought I said it was fucking empty last time you handed it to me. He is God! Why do you think they're sending him to the gas chamber? Thank you, Trump. Squeeze the trigger. You're pulling. No pain in your mouth. Squeeze. Stop. I want to talk to you and your people, Charlie. <laughs> Never put a gun at anyone. <laughs> You tell me what happened to Simmy. Simmy we opened up her mind. She split. Her parents called. She hasn't been home for five days. Goddamn hippies better be straight with me. Better watch what you're saying, shorty. <laughs> or I'm gonna have your head in a box. Snitches? Snitches will be taken care of. Chief, it's, uh, it's 6 o'clock. Already? Sure is. You know, not, uh, not everybody in the world's a workaholic like you happen to be. And... And that's half the day off, and I'll bet you, when I get home, just might have a couple of steaks on the grill and maybe even a cheap bottle of wine with you. Well, I think I'm going to hang around about another hour or so. Anyway, I got a lot to do. Well, I'll uh, I'll see you about nine in the morning, okay? All right, sounds good. Say hi to Ned for me. Sure will. See you tomorrow. Good night. Before, now make your sound Charlie's the only complete man I've ever met. He won't let any woman talk him into anything. He won't take any back talk or whining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we missed you. Charlie's missed Where the you. hell have you been? Are you staying? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? You've got a lot of catching up to do. He never really gave orders. He was so evil. He would just scare us to death with his preachings. Every night, he'd tell us there was going to be a race war and that Whitey and the Blacks were going to go to war and it's going to be the worst war the world had ever seen. And he said that we had to be ready to save the, the children and rescue the homeless babies and carry them off into the desert to safety. And he said we had to start collecting dune buggies and guns and supplies and all these other things to help us survive. And then he would just calmly pull out this buck knife. And he said, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm going to start carrying a knife. There's no good. Or no evil, there just is. Did you have any idea you were gonna be one of the apostles? An apostle? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Come on, Tex, why else would you and I be here right now? Why would any of us be here? Charlie. That's right. Oh. Come on, Patty. Well, you know who he is, don't you? 
It's all true, Tex. I know about these things. I know it's all true. I used to teach Sunday school. I was studying to be a nun before I met Charlie. The gospel according to Charlie is all you girls know. You're absolutely fucking right, Tex, because Charlie is Christ. And Christ is love. And Charlie is love. That makes Charlie and Christ one. The Beatles laid it all out on the White Album. The four angels, the faces of men, and the hair of women. That's the Beatles. And the breastplates of fire. That's their electric guitar, see? You know who the fifth angel is, don't you? Don't you? I'm just so sick of this mind fucking bullshit. You better be ready. Two weeks later, everybody's carrying a knife, and Charlie's teaching us the best way to slit a person's throat. Just like there's no past and no future, just now. That's all that's important. The time is gonna come when all men will judge themselves before God. It'll be the worst hell, the worst hell on earth. It'll make Nazi Germany look like a picnic. And you gotta be ready for that, right now, right here, right now, just like that. And that's where we're at all the time. Charlie set up Helter Skelter patrols. We kept 24-hour a day lookouts posted with shotguns around the ranch. It was perfect time for Charlie because the family was starting to drift apart. But now we were being pushed the last safe corner of the earth, the desert. Now, the district attorney made up the lie that Charlie was trying to start this black-white war to bring on Armageddon. Charlie didn't start the war. As far as we were all concerned, it was already coming down. Helter Skelter is the name of a song performed by the Beatles, period. Helter Skelter was very real to us. For all we knew, it was happening. All the events were taking place, and we thought we really had to get to the desert, that the desert was the only way that we could be saved. We'd still make music and orgy, but now it had this dark underbelly to it. Everything was biblical and apocalyptic. We will kill anyone who gets in our way, period. What are we gonna do, Charlie? Creepy crawl some pig's house? Of course I love Charlie. I felt like he was the Messiah come again. You know, the second coming of Christ. <laughs>
of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Latin tongue half his name is Exterminus. <laughs> starting to space it real bad and I fucking looked over and Charlie looked like the devil man I said man I think we're in hell he said yeah ain't it groovy groovy groovy, groovy. <laughs> I was getting some real weird pictures, so I got out while the getting was good. What do you mean leaving? You can't. Will you go with me? Why? You can't leave. Te I overheard Tex and Sadie, and they're watching you. I gotta get out of here. Why? What is going on? I'm scared. It's wrong. Charlie asked me if I would kill somebody. What's in the bag, sunshine? Hi, Sadie. <laughs> you can't kill. Kill. Bunch of people with their backs up against the wall, willing almost to kill someone. Oh, yeah, in a split second. Kill crazy and throw your life away. <laughs> traces of my own will or personality had totally dissolved by this time. I was just an extension of Charlie, and I took my role of enforcer very seriously. Where were you going? What's the big deal? I just wanted to be by myself for a while. She's wearing these. I like to stay in focus. You were running away. I wasn't running away. Look, what's the big deal all of a sudden? You guys are acting like the ranch has become a military camp. Take them off. Charlie told you not to wear them. Stop it. I want to wear them. Really I'm telling anyone. Going out to Death Valley, you know, it made a lot of sense. Somewhere that we could raise our children and let them teach us some of the things that we need to learn. In a place that's closer to the land and the stars and the spirit of life. Do it again, I'll kill you. We'll hang you in a tree and we'll cut your tongue out. You got no idea how desperate things were out there. I'm not talking frustration, I'm talking lunacy. Nam yo ho renge kyo, 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 nam yo ho renge kyo. Charlie thought that Gary had inherited a lot of money. So Charlie asked Gary to join the family and come with us to the desert. Gary said no, so Charlie told Bobby and I to try to convince him. I've given you, give, given you all help in times of need, but I'm not following Charlie into the desert. I have my life, and it's here. We're not asking you to change, Gary. You can bring your... Your gahans Your gahans out there. You can have everything there that you have here. We love you, Gary. We need you, man. I need you. No. All right? You're still my brother and my sister. But I must Last be true chance. to myself. It's going to take a lot of money for a move this I'll time. I'll give you $40, OK? How about 20 grand? <laughs> How about it? We need that money, Gary. The whole thing with Gary was that he had burned me on a 1,000 tabs of mescaline. I went there simply to get my money back. I think you should leave right now. Bullshit. We ain't kidding, Gary. Bobby, what are you doing? Look, I don't know what Charlie told you, but I don't have $20,000, and I'm You're not You're bullshitting me! Bobby? Get out of my house! I'm gonna find. He's not gonna find anything. Shut up. You're 
trashed this place. We've turned it upside down. I don't know what else. I don't know if he has it. All right, fine. Okay. All right, fine. We'll be here. You're making terrible causes. Causes you'll answer for Charlie's in later life. Charlie's you, man. You can't change the causes you've made, but you can counter them with positive ones. What the hell? You too, Sadie. Just go. And tell that to Charlie. Gary had no stomach for what was going on. He just kept saying over and over again that he didn't have any money and, and he was tired and he wanted to go to sleep. And me and Bobby looked everywhere in that house for money. That's Charlie. Let him in. Finally, Bobby didn't know what to do. Get up. Get up. Charlie, where's Bruce? Charlie, I, I don't think you know what you're doing by this. I want to talk about that money, Jack, right now. Where is it? Take your people and get out. Don't, don't come back without the money. Man. During my trial, the prosecution wanted to involve Charlie in my case, which is difficult because he was never there at any time. I cut Gary when we were fighting. It wasn't his ear. It was more like this little slash on his cheek. Take this. It's a little safer. Oh. Oh. Clean up, woman. Oh. Oh. I think at that point, Charlie knew what was going on, but we didn't. I know Bobby was not at all ready for what was happening. What? Shut up! I'm gonna go get something to fix his hair. You're not going anywhere. And Look, we will keep you bleeding until you Jesus. tell us where that fucking money is! He's not gonna tell us a fucking thing unless we help him. That's right. I'm gonna rip this place apart, and you're gonna watch it. I am going to get some medical supplies right you now. You do what I say, say. Fuck you! Something we can't stay here much longer. If you turn this place upside down. What do you want to do? We'll call the ranch. Ask Charlie. <laughs> Ask Charlie. Ask Charlie, sure. Charlie always has an answer, right? It's not always the right answer, but he always has an answer. What the hell else have we ever done? That's right. What the hell else have you ever done? This. You're descending into the lower world, Gary. Where's your fame? <laughs> Call 
the ranch, Bobby. Maybe Charlie will let us take him back there. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> no, not the zero. No, Bobby, Bobby, no, no, help, help me, help, help. Stand <laughs> again, Bobby. Yeah, hey, get, get. Bobby, would you help me? To die is a, a beautiful thing. It's it's everything. It's every color in the spectrum of light, every every sound, every note in all music. I returned and tried to cover up my tracks, but I left some prints. Why a political piggy? To put it off on the blacks. Well, that's why Bobby made the paw print. You know, the Black Panthers? I had a lot of anxiety over getting busted. I split the ranch on the pretense of ditching the car. The cops woke me up one morning on the side of the road. Called in the car, found the knife in the car, hauled my ass in, effectively negating all of my creative efforts forever. This is all your fault, Charlie! Shut up! You killed me! As long as any of us are in jail, we're all in jail. You know, I'm, I'm walking around out here, but I'm in jail with every single young person that should be free. Yeah, I'm in the Hall of Justice with Charlie, and I'm on death row with Bobby. Well, they got Bobby. It was for the love of brother. <laughs> this had nothing to do with the race war. No, no blacks against whites, no Armageddon, no white owl, no Helter Skelter. That wasn't what it was about. Then he went on about how we were a family and we weren't gonna let one of our brothers rot in jail. Girls loved Bobby enough to do this. As they took these people's lives, they were willing to give their own lives. And that's what they're doing right now on death row. It's for the love of brother. And we knew that Charlie was willing to give his life. He brought up the subject of lots of Papa and how that had been my mess and how he had to clean that one up. That he had taken a life and now it was my turn to repay that debt. Well, the girls, they decided if they found the police, they found more bodies with, with writing on the wall of blood, that, that they'd assume that the killer was on the loose and they'd let Bobby go. He told me that the girls had a plan and they needed me to help them carry it out. He said, go to Terry's old place, take all the money you find, and kill anyone there. I was getting into my creepy crawl clothes, and me and Tex were sneaking some speed and getting ready to go. Linda, get up. Wake up! Now you're gonna need your driver's license, a change of clothes, put on dark clothes like I'm wearing, and bring your knife. Linda, I want you to go wherever Tex tells you. Everybody, do whatever Tex says. He knows what to do. Listen to him. And leave a sign. You girls know what I mean. Something witchy. So I led them there. I had been there three times before. I'd step out of this casket like some no. freaky vampire or something. And I would no. point at my victim. Hey, shut and up! I would dance in front I of him. I wish you'd shut up! up! Shut the fuck up! We're driving! Go! I had 
the girls wait in the car while I climbed the telephone pole and cut the wire. I went down an embankment, climbed a fence, and over some barbed wire. We were headed toward the house when we saw a car coming up the driveway. Get down. Get down. front door and I let Sadie in. Go check for other people. What time is it? Ah! What, do you, what do you want? I'm the devil and I'm here to do the devil's business. Linda, Linda, I need your knife. What's wrong with you? Listen for sounds. <gasps> Sadie came back in with a woman dressed in a nightgown and told me that there was another couple in one of the bedrooms. Watch her. What? Watch her. Move! I'm scared. Be careful with her, goddamn you! Silence! One more word and you will die. He means it! Methadrine crystal that I had snorted earlier was blurring everything together. Time was telescoping. As soon as I had a thought, I was already physically acting on it. To me, these people were not human. They were less than human. They were artificial. $72. Seventy two dollars, is that all you have? How so much do you want? I want a thousand! Well, we have more, we can get more, much more if you just give us time. Please, please. Yeah, I'm kidding. I don't know.
have my baby. I just want to have my baby. Please let me have my baby. Look, bitch, I don't give a shit about you. I don't care if you're gonna have a baby. You better be ready, because you're gonna die, and I don't feel a thing about it. You have to have a real love in your heart to do this for people. Well, what's the big deal? A million babies are born and die each day. Tex told me to dip a towel in her blood and write something that would shock the world. And so I did. Charlie was waiting for us when we got back to the ranch, sitting naked in the moonlight. He asked us if we had any remorse for what we'd done. Of course, the right answer was no. I remember Patty telling me about it, and then I went through a change, and, and I thought, well, right on. I guess we did it. Well, the next night, Charlie uh, gathered up Clem, Sadie, Leslie, Patty, and me, and uh, told us to come with him. Well, um, Charlie made sure that he... <sighs> He sort of made me feel really guilty and said that I should want to do it because it was going to help Bobby. Linda drove, of course, because she had the only valid driver's license. And we went to this house that Charlie had once partied at, and he said, we're going to do the one on the right of that house. He said that the night before had been too messy and that this time we were going to do it differently. So he went inside, and he tied up the couple who lived there with some leather laces. And he came back out and he told uh, Patty and Leslie and me to go in and kill him. Charlie, can, can, we, can we just go now? Can we just but go now, But don't tell them what you're going to do. Don't scare them. That way they won't fight. <laughs> Shut him up. <laughs> you're going to come to me, you. <laughs> Please don't, please don't stop. I've got money. I've got money. You don't need to do this. What are you doing? No. Take him. You don't have to do this. Oh, no. Where is he? Where is she? Rosemary. Rosemary. Shut up, Kate. Shut up, Kate. Because I was. I was. I was in love with Bobby. Did you kill her? No, Patty did. 
Oh, you got a stab. Rosemary and Lino and not to things and not pigs. God, I'm so sorry. I just want to get out of here so I can make something good with my life. <laughs> oh, I had Patty right on the walls in the refrigerator with their blood. The girls got something to eat from the refrigerator. I took a shower, and then we just hitchhiked back to the ranch. They're willing to be in jail. They know that they're in jail for everybody. And maybe we'll all have to go to jail before we can get them out. Maybe we'll have to go up to the jail and say, hi, take me. But they know they're facing the gas chamber, and they don't care. That's what people don't understand. They don't care. And they're willing to die for all young people to be free. Snitches will be taken care of. Charlie said, Charlie said they had to kill Shorty. He had to have Clem chop his head off. I heard that Shorty wouldn't die unless they chopped his head off. Charlie said he knew too much. He actually punched her out. <laughs> Shorty? Charlie. So we cut him into ribbons. Shorty? Right. First we dosed him. And then we hopped at him. We stuck a needle through his fingernails. And in his eyes. Through his nipples. And cock. <laughs> It's not nice to snitch, Shorty. He pissed himself. Pissing blood. <laughs> then we drug him through the mud. Aww. He was screaming for his life. And Charlie didn't work. And we stabbed him like Caesar. And we <laughs> the whole family. <laughs> he just wouldn't die. We just kept stabbing and stabbing and stabbing and stabbing and stabbing. And stabbing, and stabbing so and Clem stabbing. cut his head off. <laughs> we cut him into nine pieces and buried him in nine places. His legs are buried right under you. <laughs> it's not nice to snitch. The uh, girls made up that story about us chopping him up into nine pieces. Even the prosecutor put that in his book. But when Clem led the police out to the ranch, they found the skeleton intact, of course. No! <laughs> It's ready. The revolution is ready, and as soon as Charlie gets out, it's on. The revolution is on! And if you try to hurt Charlie, you'll all die. He is God. Perfect. As perfection is. Because it's exactly the same thing. I had a brother once who was shot and killed like that for nothing in the war. I mean, it's exactly the same thing. Every single day, love is being killed. We're all in this together. You gotta stab. As long as Charlie is locked away in his asylum prison grave, you can say anything you want about him. You can make more bogus books and movies about his life. You can joke about him. You can pretend to be him. You can say and do anything you want. The truth is, you don't have the soul to face him. You're a lot of vultures. You are. You live off the sacrifice of the young people. You're bloodsuckers. You are. Some little phallic symbols, you know? We're waiting for our father to be set free. He's a genius, you don't realize. Leslie's lawyer, Ronald. The press called him Leslie's hippie lawyer. And we all thought he was pretty cool. But he was just like the others. He was the first of the retaliation murders. We 
are all facing the gas chamber. Hey, hey man, what do you think would happen if one night 75 heads were cut off? Excuse me. You have just judged yourself! You better lock your doors and watch your own kids! Your whole system's a game, you blind, stupid people! Your children will turn against you! Death, that's what you're all gonna get! Your children will rise up and kill you. Let the night roll! The coalition here! The office is a crime scene. Him. I'm Jack Wilson. Leave a message. Him. You taught him. Why are you wearing that shirt, Todd? Um, this is Charlie. <laughs> so Dennis is back. Yeah. Um, Dennis has seen this shirt before. <laughs> no, man, I forget. What does that shirt say? <laughs> supposed to mean Charlie doesn't serve. Come on, man, let's get out of here. Let's go. <laughs> I thought you guys knew about this shit. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, poor Charlie wasted all them people and everything, you know, before they sent him out to the clink. You know, he used to surf. <laughs> uh, you know, Charlie don't surf no more. He's in right, jail. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you don't have anything on me that I care about, because everything that you have on me, I've let it all hang right out for everybody to see. Now you get to worry about yourself. I don't mind losing my life. What about you? I don't mind losing my reputation. What about you? I don't mind, I don't mind being tortured. What about you? I'm just no longer afraid, and I've lost interest in this old world of capitalist sin. And racism, I've lost interest in it. So if somebody wants to make me stay in it by compromising with filthy-minded people that cannot even have respect for somebody that would die for even his enemies, and they want to cause anarchy in our midst, I would just as soon bring it all to a gallant, 
a glorious screaming end. Just bring it to a screeching stop in a one glorious moment of triumph. So you think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it. Think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it, think about it, think about it, think think about it. Think about it, 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 think about it,